from Cascade, active glands and resident lunatic, I guess. And Ron, who have you brought along with you on the phone here today? We are talking to Milton William Cooper. He's at home there in the United States of America. He's a, I don't know, conspiracy theorist. He's on the air five nights a week on WWCR Worldwide Christian Radio Shortwave 7.435 kilohertz from 9 until 10 p.m. Pacific time, and I don't know, I went out and bought a shortwave radio just to listen to him, and as it turns out, he is being jammed at certain times, and I'm annoyed, so now we have him on the air for my own personal <laughs> revenge. <laughs> so, Bill, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So, who are you, first off, for the listeners out there in Radio Land? Well, uh, I'm just an ordinary average guy like everybody else, but many years ago, I spent uh, some time in the service of my country and was trained and indoctrinated into the Office of Naval Intelligence, where I spent uh, s several years as um, um, an intelligence operative. And uh, there I saw an awful lot of documentation that just told me that the world is not what the average person thinks it is. In fact, <laughs> everybody out there is living in fantasy land and are very seldom ever told the real truth behind the scenes. And uh, I decided I didn't want any anything to do with uh, that kind of deception, so I left the uh, service about uh, five years before I could have retired very comfortably upon everybody's tax dollars. And I've been researching uh, the meaning of all of the documentation that I saw and everything that I learned while I was in naval intelligence for the last 20-some-odd years, and the results are just absolutely amazing. One of the results that you've been studying is the Kennedy assassination. That's correct. You believe, or you have proof, that the driver of the limousine that Kennedy was in killed Kennedy, in fact. No. What I saw is in documentation, a top-secret document under a, an operation called Operation Majority, that the driver had killed President Kennedy and that the act was plainly visible in a film that was withheld from the public. It described the weapon that was used and uh, um, that the, the reason for his brain disappearing was to uh, prevent an autopsy from discovering the real uh, type of projectile and weapon that was used, which was a gas-operated uh, or gas-powered electronically operated assassination pistol developed by the Central Intelligence Agency which actually fired an exploding pellet containing shellfish toxin. I mean, nobody could survive a hit like that. It was absolutely impossible that he could have lived, no matter where he, he was hit in the body with that kind of a weapon. Um, but you learned this while studying this. You were working for the you were working for the military at the time. Yes, I was working for the Office of Naval Intelligence, and I discovered that operat operatives of uh, the Office of Naval Intelligence uh, actually participated in the assassination. And this is not the Zapruder film that you saw this on? No, this was uh, on hard documentation, paper copy. Uh, then I began looking for a film that would show it because the documentation said that it was plainly visible in a film withheld from the public. Well, uh, it was in 1972 that I saw this documentation. It wasn't until 1988 that I was able to see a copy of the Zapruder film uh, that appeared to show William Greer turning around and shooting the president. William you... Greer being the driver of the car, the Secret Service agent that the documents claimed had done it. Okay, did you did you originally get that film from Lars Hansen? No, I originally got the film from uh, John Lear, who stated that he had obtained it from a CIA operative who was a friend of his. Well, that CIA operative who was a friend of his turned out to be Lars Hansen. How about in a typical Zapruder film that people know? Can you actually see it happening? You know, they would play it often on the anniversary of the assassination of JFK. You're saying if you look closely at the driver, you can see him turning around and killing Kennedy. Well, that's what it, that's what it appears uh, to be. That's what it appears to see. What you see in that film confirms what I saw in documentation, if what we're seeing in the film is correct. Um, we have since obtained a first-generation copy of the original Zapruder film from a member of my intelligence organization from the government of the United States. And we put that on the computer, and we've seen that they have literally scraped the, the, the motion right off of the film. So what appears to be William Greer turning around and shooting the president is actually um, there's, there's nothing there on the film when you look at it on a computer. So what they've either done is they've planted documents stating that William Greer killed the president and shown them to many people, not only me. I'm not the only one who saw those documents. Um, 
while in the service of my country, and, and one other person uh, who's not, who was never in the military, Linda Moulton Howe, was shown the same documents in the Air Force Office of Special Investigation headquarters at Kirtland Air Force Base by Sergeant Richard Doty, stated the exact same thing, and the, the documents were from the same Operation Majority. So uh, either it's true, and they've scraped the emulsion off the film so that you cannot see uh, anything there, but you can tell that it's not a play of light, it's not reflection, uh, they're hiding something, or they've either scraped the emulsion off the film to create something uh, in our uh, conscious that actually didn't happen. We're not exactly sure what. But one thing it proves beyond any shadow of any doubt whatsoever that they've never been able to prove conclusively before is that it definitely was a conspiracy because whoever doctored the film was a part of the assassination group and they're trying to hide something or lead the public astray. Uh, now, Mr. Cooper, uh, you have a degree in photography, don't you? Yes, I did. Uh, from where? From Long Beach. Long Beach. So, Grant, as we, we're talking here to William Cooper. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Arizona. I live in Arizona. Somewhere in Arizona. And we also have here Ron from the local band Cats Game. And you're on the Nardwari Human Serviette Show. You mentioned that the driver, Greer, turned on to kill Kennedy. Do you, believe, do you believe there are any other shots fired? Like, was he working in tandem with people? Well, I think there were several shots fired. That's obvious, but I believe that uh, that probably uh, most of the shots were fired from the front, not from the rear. No shots were fired from the sixth floor of the depository building. Um, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald had nothing to do with the assassination except that he was a patsy, in fact. And uh, we have a photograph of him actually standing in the doorway of the ground floor of the book depository building watching the motorcade as it passes by. So we can prove conclusively that Lee Harvey Oswald was not even uh, inside the building. In fact, he was in the doorway watching the motorcade pass by when the president was assassinated. What happened to the driver of the Kennedy limousine? We, we have no idea. We found documentation that said that he died in 1985. Um, and... Uh, if you know anything about the intelligence community, that does not mean that he's dead. How about other figures that were on the scene at the time, like that umbrella man? If you look at the Kennedy assassination, there's a guy holding an umbrella, and it was like a really nice day in Dallas. What was he doing with an umbrella? Well, we believe that that was the, um, the signal. See, once a shot is fired and the president is hit, it must go through to its conclusion. So the first shot, wherever it came from, and it had to come from the front because it hit him in the throat and there was no exit wound, uh, that shot hit the president. The man standing there on the curb saw that, opened the umbrella. That signaled everyone who was uh, involved in the assassination that the president had been hit. That meant that no matter what happened, he could not be allowed to escape alive. Uh, you see, because if he had, if he had escaped alive and lived, then he could have spent the rest of his administration hunting those people down and hanging them by the neck until dead. <laughs> so they were hoping to kill him with the shots that were fired safe in the grassy knoll, but they didn't, so the driver had to finish him off. Well, that's uh, that's exactly what it looks like. And how about Mrs. Kennedy? And she hasn't come forward because she's just afraid? Did well, she, she never could come forward, number one. At the time, uh, the people who were involved in the assassination of her husband uh, were surrounding her children. Her children were in their care. And we're in their care for many years thereafter. So, uh, did, did the Kennedy family receive kickbacks for the loss of their son? Or? We have traced payments to the Kennedy family made uh, um, from a by an officer from the Coast Guard station of Peanut Island across the property boundary under the Kennedy property. Uh, suitcases of money were delivered to the Kennedy family for approximately six years following the assassination. So we believe that the Kennedy family were convinced that whatever reason their son was assassinated was in the best interest of the country and uh, were paid off to keep their mouth shut. Yeah, so whatever is going on here is obviously worth the loss of a son for money then, Well, as uh, far as they're concerned. Apparently they... They had their price, and that price was satisfied. Let's put it that way. Have you heard of Dave Emery at all before from Radio Free America? No, I don't know anything or about that. Valentine, obviously? No. Well, Dave Emery broadcasts every night on CITR from 10 to 12 on Sunday nights. He's also on KFGC, Los Altos Hills, Berkeley. And he believes in a lot of stuff, a lot of the white Russians that were in Dallas at the time, like George DeMora showed. Forget all that stuff. You don't believe that? You don't believe anything with Dave Forget Emery? Forget all that stuff. If you've never been to Dealey Plaza, take a trip. 
John F. Kennedy was killed by the secret society, specifically the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Well, now it's a perfect time for you to go into the um, Atlanta lecture video that you've just finished. Uh, this is a second round. We're not finished yet. We're not finished yet. No, it's, okay, just a second here. Let's just get back to this for a second. This is the Kennedy assassination. So you're saying, Radio for America, Dave Emery, he says a lot of stuff is based around the Galen organization. Are you familiar with the Galen organization? Forget that. Forget, <laughs> forget the Galen. Forget it. Ron. This is important. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. Stop looking at the exoteric or what people are throwing out for you as bait and start looking at the esoteric, the real occult meanings of everything surrounding this assassination. Kennedy was assassination, assassinated in Dealey Plaza, which is in the shape of a truncated triangle. In other words, the top has no capstone. There is an eye in that triangle. It's the underpass under the railroad overpass. Okay? This is a well-known occult symbol for the Illuminati or those who are illumined, they're the guardians of the secrets of the ages. Dealey Plaza also has the four quarters of a Celtic or Druid Temple of the Sun in Dealey Plaza. It is an exact duplicate, although cut in four quarters, of the Temple of the Sun, which is the outer courtyard of the Vatican. There is also an obelisk in Dealey Plaza, um, cut into 14 sections, which is the symbol of the phallus of Osiris, the lost word of Freemasonry, the generative force, the light Lucifer, which is the god of, of this secret society. Okay, I mentioned Dave Emery earlier, and we're talking here to William Cooper. Dave, I'm um, sorry, William, are you the only one, Bill, um, preaching these ideals? Is I'm not any preaching anything. I'm just telling people to open their eyes and look at what's there. Kennedy was assassinated on the 33rd parallel, the highest degree, um, the meritorious degree of the secret societies. He was assassinated on November the 22nd. You add November the 11th month with 22, you get 33 again. It also happens to be the anniversary date of the Pope's papal bull condemning the Knights Templar to torture by the Dominican monks under the Inquisition. You subtract the year 1307 when that papal bull was issued from 1963, and you get 666. Kennedy was shot in the head, the throat, and the back, the exact same wound suffered by Hiram Abiff in the Masonic initiation, which they have sworn to revenge. How about the uh, signing of the Declaration of Independence of the United States on July 4th, uh, 1776? That all traces in there as well. That all goes in there. How about the Lincoln assassination? Are there any links to that? Uh, are you into that? Detail? Lincoln's been dead for a lot of years. The people who assassinated him are dead. Anybody that's following that around is wasting their time. We need to deal with today, not a hundred years ago. Okay, so is there anybody else that believes these things that you do? Are you the first one to bring this out? Well, I'm the first right? one who's ever looked at it. Everybody else is running around believing all these uh, these uh, disinformation peddlers. Um, who are they? Who are the disinformation peddlers? There are all these people who write a new book every year uh, with with uh, new evidence, with new uh, this, with new that, all pointing in different directions. And one says it's the mafia, and the other says it's the Galen organization. The other blames it on the CIA. The truth is, it's members of all of those who belong to the secret societies. What? How long have you been researching this? Uh, God, for twenty years. For, yeah, about well, twenty years. Huh? What other media exposure have you gotten? Well, not very much, simply because people who play around with this and uh, really try to get it out in front of the public eye usually end up dead somewhere. You did get a play on Flipside Magazine, right? Yes. Uh, how, how much feedback from that? Yeah, I got quite a bit of feedback. I was amazed that uh, so many young people who usually uh, aren't concerned about anything uh, except um, getting in somebody's pants and uh, getting high um, were... were really interested in what's going on and where their country is heading and uh, I was surprised by that because uh, I didn't think that that many young people were and that, uh, that pleased me quite a bit. How about hard copy? Haven't been on any of those or any other future things coming up? Oh, hard, around? Copy, hard copy was going to put on the Kennedy information and one hour before we were to go on the air they got a phone call from a uh, top executive in NBC and told them if they put me on the air, they'd all be fired. So, <laughs> how, so that was the end of that. How can a secret be kept so long? I mean, there has to be some botch ups along the right. way. It's pretty easy when you think of who owns NBC in the first place. And well, you're, the fact you're, that, you know, that they, they supposedly have you, been building you're, you're looking these at UFOs. It, you're looking at it in the wrong way, guys. That normally secrets can't be kept this long, and even though that they have been kept, there have still been leaks. 
and there always will be leaks when people are involved with anything. And I guess you're a leak. You're but, a leak. That's correct. But what you're looking at is not just a bunch of guys that decided to assassinate the president. You're looking at an ancient organization that goes back in history for some 6,000 years, which has blood oaths, which is, in fact, a religion, and everybody who belongs in it believes wholeheartedly and completely in what they're doing, and that's the real reason why the secret can be kept. They're promoting a religion with blood oaths that they'll be murdered if they ever reveal the secrets. How about a Canadian link? Are there any Canadian links to the Absolutely. secret? Absolutely. Just walk no, no. around in your own town, and pretty soon you're going to bump up against a temple without any windows that says the Masonic Lodge, Masonic Temple, Freemason, Empty Ump, whatever. What the one on Agnes Street near Westminster there. How about Brian Mulroney, our, our Prime Minister? Is he aware? Absolutely. And he just quit, and did, like, after he signed NASA, and that essentially, like, created Kingdom One of the New World Order, and then he got the hell out, like, just after Joe Clark did, you know? Sure, so a new guy can come in and say, well, it's not my fault, you know, <laughs> and yeah, well, continue on and do his part. And and actually, on Canada AM last week, on, on Wednesday morning, he actually said that he was going to move back to Montreal to pursue religious beliefs. That's exactly right. So what should people do with these Islamic calls? Should they bomb them, Bill? No, I don't advocate violence. I advocate dealing everything within the law. But you have to realize you can put a lot of social pressure on these people. You can just you can just socially ban them from everything in the community. Don't talk to them. They come in your store. Don't serve them. Um, it's, How do you know? It's very easy. Do you, don't invite them to parties. Don't talk to them. Do you just have, shun them. Do you have to shake their hand and have them pressing on your second knuckle or tickling your palm to find out who they are? Or? No, all you got to do is go down to the Masonic Temple when they have their meetings and see who goes in and out. <laughs> take a video camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take a video camera. Uh, play it on, play it on local access TV and expose who, the, who, the, who these creep uh, destroyers are because they're destroying okay, society. Okay, as okay, we okay, 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 Ron, this is not a comedy show. This is serious. And we do have a question from another station member here, um, Bill, to pose towards you. And A.O. Chapman joins us now. A.O.? Hello. 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 Uh, I have a few questions, Bill. Sure. And I'd like to ask, uh, first of all, if you've read the book, uh, The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail. Yes, I have. Uh, now, what is, I'm curious. What is that book, first, A.L.? Uh, it's a book written, I guess, about three or four years ago now. Uh, and it, uh, among other things, uh, talks about, uh, I'm trying to encapsulate it. I'm just per perhaps, you know. It opens the, up part of the picture. What it's talking about is, is a portion of the reason for the secret society's existence today. And that is to guard the bloodline of those who supposedly, with the, the secret societies, believe have the divine right to rule. And, and they are preparing in secret one of these members of that family to be the charismatic political and religious leader of the world right. in the New World Order. Um, okay, and, and sort of, um, so you, you feel that book was pretty much on the, on the line. There was no well, they made a lot of mistakes, and they, they didn't carry it to its, to its fulfillment. They mm -hmm. left a lot of... Uh, of guesswork up to the reader, but they gave the reader enough clues that if, if they wanted to do their own research, they could come up with the answers themselves anyway. The problem is most people are so damn lazy, they'll never get off their butt and look up anything. Right. Okay, uh, one, uh, one thing we haven't really got into that much today, I guess, is uh, some of your stuff uh, that you've written about MJ-12. Uh, and I'd like to ask, uh, uh, the first uh, the first stuff I ever read of, uh, that came across from you was... Uh, what is MJ-12? That UFOs? That, that is regarding the UFOs. Uh, and the first stuff I ever came across of yours was something called the Secret Government, uh -huh. uh, that I think is dated from 1989. Yeah, A.O. Chapman, in the other room here, Bill, he gave me a Xerox photocopy manuscript of yours. It was, like, really cryptic. It was, like, passed around. People were, like, showing it to each other and creating all this furor. But then I saw you in the flip and I found out you really were a real guy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm curious to know... Uh, uh, in, in, one, uh, in one excerpt from that, I remember reading about uh, you speak of General Forrestal being, uh, I guess, murdered. Well, he wasn't uh, the general. He was Secretary of Defense, and he was murdered. There's no doubt about that. He was murdered by... Uh, by um, they threw him out a window and hung him by a bed sheet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. And later on, they changed it to say that his uh, bathrobe uh, belt was wrapped around his neck. But uh, that was all... That was all made to to look like uh, he had committed suicide. Right. Now, one thing that you uh, I remember it was stated in the in the secret government paper that I read uh, was that uh, the very last page, I believe, uh, stated uh, some idea or some idea of directions from you to keep uh, keep aware of this stuff. But I'm curious to know. I mean, uh, to get into it now, the whole ramifications of of uh, what's stated in that. Uh, 
what's stated in that essay uh, perhaps is the wrong thing to do right now, but I'm curious to know what actual uh, good phrasing, eh? What actual what actual things do you recommend that the average person do not only just keep aware but to protect oneself? Because I mean, a lot of this stuff is as strange as it sounds. Well, uh, number one, they have to they have to understand that what's happening in the world today is not the result of any accident. It's the result of a long range plan that is coming into fruition now to break down the sovereignty of all nations, destroy all existing religions, and create a one world government, a one world religion which will be totalitarian and socialist in nature. And with these, what's wrong with socialism? With these free trade agreements, they're in the process of destroying the middle class. What's wrong with socialism? Yeah, socialism is for babies. Okay. Socialism is for people who cannot stand up and be responsible for their own actions, who cannot find their own job, who cannot feed themselves, who, who do not know how to. Okay. okay. What are you? What are you, Bill? Are you a Democrat or are you an anti-fascist? Well, where they decide exactly what they want the goal to be, then they create two opposing sides, the clash of which will bring about the goal that they wanted, and the people will look at it as if it appeared by magic or by accident, or that it was their own idea, so they are more readily accepted. This is not a theory. Uh, if you study history and really get in and study these, these organizations, you begin to see that it's fact. Okay. And, and can be documented. Okay, Bill, well, I guess we're sort of, we're, we're winding down the time here now. Um, we're speaking here to uh, Bill Cooper, and what would you classify yourself as, like in a couple words or less? Well, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, who are you? Like, if somebody said, I was listening to CITO and I heard Bill Cooper, he's, uh... I'm an average, ordinary person, just like anybody else, not any smarter, not any dumber, who's really seriously uh, concerned about uh, the future of our freedom. And we also have in the studio here Ron from Cat's Game, who is a devout follower of William Cooper, and A.O. Chapman, who contributed some stuff. I'd like to move just a bit to I somebody... Don't follow anybody. Okay, okay. I'd like to um, get now to some of the UFO stuff here. Well, not UFO, but is it my understanding, uh, from what I've understood from seeing your videotapes, is it true that the U.S. Army possesses spaceships and will eventually fake an alien invasion in 1998 in which will unite the world under the leadership of Freemasons? That's one of the scenarios. Or the fact is that um, they could conceivably begin to attack us with this okay, sort of super okay, technology me, about a year before this star is supposed to reappear in the heavens. Therefore, everybody would be in such a state of panic that these that the Illuminatis could say, that, oh, well, hey, if you guys are all panicking, look, here's our star. We said it would reappear. There it is. We are right. You are wrong, and we're taking over. So how did the U.S. Army, who seems to be bundling a lot of stuff, how did they get a hold of alien craft, and how long have we had contact with them? Well, first place, it's not the U.S. Army. It's secret agencies within the United States government that are under control of the secret societies. Uh, these things are being flowed at a super secret test site called Groom Dry Lake or Area 51 in the state of Nevada. We have them on videotape, uh, extensive footage both at night and daylight. They are what people normally call UFOs, uh, flying saucers. Uh, some of them are circular shaped um, that are owned and operated by uh, humans. They're, they're either rem remote controlled or have hu human pilots. We're not exactly sure which. Uh, but they're not extraterrestrial at all. They're the results of a secret technology that were originally developed by the Germans during World War II, but not perfected to the state of being used as a weapons platform. How did, how did we get a hold of the technology? Like, did we need aliens? Have we, you made... No, we took it from the Germans. We took it from the Germans. Okay, how did the aliens... Have, have anybody in the U.S. government ever met any aliens? We don't know if there are any aliens at all. But wasn't there, okay, an alien craft that crashed that you refer back to? These aliens could have been created in something like a cryogenics lab in the future. Wait, 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 you want to answer the question you're wrong? Okay. 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 Sorry, John. Oh, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Oh, so, Bill, how were the alien craft ever crashed, landed? We what? don't know. We know that the government has set up a scenario where there is evidence that seems to point that something crashed which has been interpreted as an extraterrestrial craft with dead extraterrestrial bodies. But these could have been monkeys with their ears and tail cut off and surgical intervention done to their eyes, and uh, uh, who knows what, what it was. Okay, how did the Germans get this technology then? They, they developed it with their, with their science. So, uh, okay, so you're saying, okay, okay, well, just moving something a bit closer to home here, um, uh, let me put it this okay. way for you so that you'll understand it a little better. Governments cannot exist unless the people feel threatened. The
primary uh, job of a government is to give the people a modicum of safety. The United States government was formed by a union of the states for their mutual benefit and protection. Okay? Now, to have a one-world government and tear down all the national boundaries, you have to instill the people of the world with enough fear that they're willing to give up what they used to be loyal to and join with something that's new that they don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> what better way to do that than if the Earth were attacked or invaded by some other species from some other planet, whether real or imagined? Okay, what about uh, abu abductions? Here on the North Shore, well, in Vancouver, B.C., there's something for the North Shore News here, Sunday, February 23rd, 1993. It says, Close encounters of the North Shore kind, nine sightings in the past year prompt UFO researchers to look for alien hotspots. And in it, it talks about abductions and alarm sensors going off and dogs hearing whining and people getting radiated. What do you... Uh, how do you you got to be careful now. Dogs can't talk, so you, nobody knows what dogs hear, number one. Number two, most so-called ufologists or UFO researchers are blithering idiots and wouldn't know how to do any research if you sat down and taught them for a year. And uh, number three, if you start looking into the actual research and development of brainwashing and mind control techniques by the United States, Great Britain, Canada, the Soviet Union, and others, and if you'll look at the mind control experiments and the actual um, um, uh, lobotomies that were performed, performed on people in hospitals in Canada, uh, you'll see that uh, this alien abduction thing is probably the most sophisticated and successful mind control operation ever conducted in the history of the world, and it's designed to make us believe that we're being threatened by some other species from some other planet so that they can have their one world government. But didn't you say in one of your papers that there was an agreement that aliens were allowed to no. pluck people from no. Earth? No, nope. you see, this is what happens. People don't read what I write. What I said was, this is what I saw in documents when I was in naval intelligence. So you're saying there are, you, there are no UFOs out there, probably? No, that's not what I said. UFOs are real. I can prove that at least some of them are owned and operated by humans here on this earth. Okay, they're, they're humans, but there's no alien ones. We don't know. So you don't know? I don't know if aliens exist or not, <laughs> but I will tell you this. In 1917, John Dewey said this in 1917. What better way to unite all humanity in a one-world government than if we were attacked by some other species from some other planet? Was it E.T. based on a true story? E.T.? If what I saw in government documents when I was in naval intelligence is true, then yes. If not, it's just another part of the conditioning of our collective consciousness to accept the reality of something that doesn't exist. And we've, and we've been on the moon since 1948 as well. Yeah, what I'm trying to tell you is nobody really knows, but whatever the truth about UFOs is, it's being used to make us give up our freedoms and join in a one-world totalitarian socialist state, and that's what we better be careful of. How about the Hubble telescope? Does that play into this at all? I have no idea. All I know is what they said about it not being tested before it was launched is a lie. The government never does anything without testing every step thoroughly six or eight times. You're, you're, oh, you're oh, question. Question. Yeah, Mr. Cooper, I'm reading in the secret document, uh, in the secret government document that I wrote of yours. Uh, I, it's been a while since I read this, so maybe you can find it. Maybe an alien krill, right? Uh, exactly. And you said you saw photographs of, of that alien. Uh, were you tracking that, those photographs up with just... That may be part of the, the conspiracy as well, or? It certainly could, because not too long ago, it appeared in the newspapers in the United States, and we verified it in research, that uh, Walt Disney and the Walt Disney Studios were involved with projects with the intelligence community, and Walt Disney was a 33rd degree Freemason, and most of his executives and people who worked in his corporation were 33rd degree Freemasons also. Mm -hmm. We also found in 1958 and, and in other years where they had uh, symposiums uh, investigating uh, with scientists present investigating the possibility of colonizing the moon and other planets that uh, Walt Disney representatives were heavily in attendance. And also I'm uh, reading in the same document uh, about the, uh, I believe it was, st uh, you, you stated it as a holograph film of the crucifixion of Christ. Uh, I stated that those documents said that, that 
that existed, but I never saw it. You never saw it, okay. Okay, um, William Cooper here. We, refer you back, we're speaking to, to William Cooper, just an average guy filming someone from Austin, Texas. Not average at all. Well, just, well, not an average, Ron says. But according to this report um, about UFOs, I'm sorry to dwell on this again, but it says there are several different kinds of UFOs, it says in this article. They range from the bizarre religious people who are trying to put their point or view across to ex-CIA people. We're not fence sitters, this guy says. Now, you mentioned you're religious before. What are you referring to you when you say they range from bizarre religious people who are trying to put their point of view across? I can't speak for that author. I have no idea who it is, but I'm not a bizarre religious person. This was, <laughs> this was the guy... You uh, haven't heard me preaching anything, have you? No, I haven't. Well, oh. maybe some interesting things. But this guy's Lauren Goldfather from a Texas-based Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Never heard of him, never heard of his organization, and how can he have a center for the study of extraterrestrial intelligence when nobody even knows if such a thing exists? Well, what did the so, uh, just you that like? fact alone makes him sound more like the blithering idiot than anybody else. What type of music do you like, Bill? Uh, I like all different kinds of music, and I play all different kinds of music on my radio show, yeah, all the way from rap to classical. I heard Chuck Berry so so, so you people can tune in to you if they want. Oh, yeah. Do you use short with Where is that on the dial? It's a, first, you have a shortwave radio, and you got to have a good antenna. The most important thing about listening to shortwave is the antenna, not really the set. The copper wire works that. Uh, but they can uh, tune in at 7435 megahertz. That's WWCR, and it's worldwide, 100,000 watts. My show is heard in every city and every continent of the world, and occasionally... Uh, they jam my program because uh, the information that I'm putting out is really hurting a lot of their efforts. Yeah, it seems like whenever you really begin to get to the heart of the matter, the program seems to leave the air completely. Um, well, yeah, well it's, you know, has, I, has anybody taken your cause, aside from Ron here, from Cat's Game? Uh, hi, Ron, how are you? Uh, Ron, has, any, has there anybody influential in the American government taken, uh, or any officials, low-ranking ones, been converted from what you were saying and are working on stuff? Like, do you have any, like Arsenio uh, Hall, perhaps? Uh, Ar Arsenio Hall, are you serious? <laughs> Get real. <laughs> Arsenio Hall, uh, if anybody's living in fantasy land, he is. He wouldn't know reality if it smacked him upside the head. He is a good entertainer, and I enjoy watching his show, but... Let's not get him confused with reality here. Is there anybody that's come, uh, in, anybody in the entertainment industry, or anybody that's come forward and agreeing with your stuff besides Ron from Cat's Game? Yeah, let's, let's actually direct this towards, like, let's say Oliver Stone here now. I don't want to regress, but uh, yeah, he, did, did you attempt to contact Oliver Stone before he went into pre-production for the movie JFK? That's correct. Attempted over and over again hundreds of times to contact him, not only myself, but intermediaries and other people. He absolutely refused to acknowledge our existence or even speak to us. And when you watch his film, you'll see that um, what he's doing is blaming everything on our government. He, what he's saying, in effect, is constitutional government doesn't work, and that's a lie, uh, in order to get us to be dissatisfied so that we'll accept the New World Order when it comes. So do you think that the name Oliver Stone is like a pseudonym and that Stone has to do with the actual basic teachings of the Freemason religion, what you were talking about? A absolutely, and he, absolutely, and he must be a member because he shows in his film that he knows who really killed Kennedy, and in the way that he does it, he's actually laughing at the rest of us. Yeah. When, the t when uh, Garrison and Prouty are sitting on the park bench in Washington, D.C., and they're talking about why, and he says, that's the question, isn't it? Why? So they who had the power? Who had the opportunity? Who had this? Who had that? And then the camera moves back, and they become real tiny in the picture. In fact, you can barely see them. And there's one dominating scene. There's one dominating uh, part of that picture, and that is the Washington Monument, which is the obelisk, the famous, the lost word of Freemasonry, the law of Luther. So, 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 there is an obelisk in sort of the front garden of the Vatican, is there not? There is an obelisk in the Temple of the Sun. These are Masonic things, right? Well, that has to do with, uh, I don't know, Mr. Cooper, would you elaborate on what an obelisk is? And the obelisk is the symbol of the lost part of Osiris. It's his penis, isn't it? That's right. He <laughs> chopped into 14 pieces, flung about the land. Isis went to recover him, could find everything but the generative part, the phallus, the penis. It's the symbol of the lost word of freedom. So we're to believe that this thing swam across the Mediterranean by itself and came up out of the water <laughs> at the Vatican or something. Okay, I just want to finish off on the UFO things here. Ron, for a second here, Ron from Catskin. Um, now, you were in Vietnam. 
Won't yeah. you? Um, uh, how come the United States government, okay, the, the people in control didn't use any UFOs in Vietnam or in the Gulf War to wipe out? There were a lot of UFO incidents involved in Vietnam, and I believe they were testing the military or weaponry capability of the craft. Uh, Vietnam had UFO incidents from the very southern tip to the northern tip uh, all the time. They were known as um, NDA helicopters? Well, when, when they were discussed in official dispatches or messages, the code word for UFO activity was enemy helicopter activity. Did, did any of them crash and the enemy get a hold of them? Not that I'm aware of. How, how about that also, that truth-motivating drug? Is, are there truth-motivating drugs? There are all kinds of drugs given to certain units depending upon what their mission is. Can you Some drugs are just to keep them awake for long periods of time. Some are to give them an artificial form of energy so that they can travel long periods, long distances uh, in short periods without collapse. Um, some are to give them a mini mental attitude so that they go into battle they're not afraid. Uh, yes, flat. drugs are used extensively to accomplish uh, certain goals in the military and in the intelligence community. Um, and will continue to be until the people get smart enough to put the lid on these creeps and stop them from all this stuff. How about the RFK assassination? Sir Han Sir Han supposedly was techno programmed to kill Robert Kennedy. How you are you into that at all? Well, he was certainly hypno programmed, but he didn't kill Robert Kennedy. So there is hypno programmed killed by a close range shot from within one or two inches behind his right ear, and the only one standing in that position was a security guard named Caesar, who has since disappeared. And so people can't, but so Saran Saran, can people be hypno-programmed? Absolutely. As I said before, if you begin to study the developments in uh, operational programs uh, of brainwashing and mind control, you'll find that what they can do is absolutely incredible will blow your mind and will teach you that right now the possibility of total control over every human being on the face of this earth for every 24 hours of their lives is a distinct possibility in the very near future. Therefore, it is true then that like Mark Lapine, who uh, committed the Montreal massacre, who was on the drug Prozac, yeah. also the, the fellow who went into, um, what's his name, he, James Huberty, who did the massacre at the McDonald's, um, they, they were all on Prozac, and all their drugs came supposedly from the same place, and that the doctor's name has never been released because, well, for obvious reasons, right? Sure, this is correct, and I was lecturing about this. I told people that this, this was going to happen long before it happened. I wrote it in my book uh, that there would be mass murders committed by ex-mental patients who were on the drug Prozac. Uh, it's just another one of my predictions that came true, but nobody seems to be paying much attention. How about the Bermuda Triangle? Are you into that at all? No. I'm, listen, let, let, me, let me make one thing perfectly clear here. I'm not into mysterious things or witchcraft or disappearing ships or anything like that. My only purpose and the only reason I even began to do any of this is because I believe that sometime in the near future we're all in danger of losing the affluence that we've worked hard for. We're in danger of losing our personal freedoms and becoming somebody's slave in the New World Order. And that's the only thing I care about. That's the only thing I'm fighting. And that's the only reason I'm doing any of this. And people can actually go and search out and find CDs UFO bases that are controlled by elements of the American establishment. Not just the American. Uh, you see, we believe that the first flying discs were actually per perfected in a remote uh, area of uh, of uh, northwestern Canada. So, are there any? Where, where can people find these these these? Go research the AVRO Aviation Company. And they can right. order and they can order your videotape too. Maybe we should give your address right now, Bill, William Cooper, if you could. And on your videotapes, which I actually saw, they actually do. You do actually go to great lengths in one of them to show about the Kennedy assassination and how the driver did turn around, turn around and shoot Kennedy. And another one goes into a lot of the UFOs and you actually going out there trying to find one of those UFO bases and you get close to it, but they swore you away. No, they didn't escort us away. We did photograph the craft flying both at night and in the daylight. They did harass us. They threatened us. Did all kinds of things. But uh, I'm not easily scared, and uh, I know my rights. So they were not one successful. Foot, one foot on the law, on the wrong side of that line, though, and you, like you said, they could shoot you or they could charge you. That's with that correct. Charge. They have they have the right, and they have been ordered to use. A deadly force, if need be, if you step across the line. Okay, briefly, I would like to bring up... Address. Okay, on. Do it, just a second. Um, it's a miracle. This, this gentleman is on the line here. Um, what I would like to ask you is, um, on, on uh, Project Red Light 2, uh, you see that um, the spacecraft, they disappear from this time. Now, does mm -hmm. that mean that they could possibly be carrying human beings 
either forward or backwards in time. That's exactly what it means. And that's true. It would certainly explain a lot of mysterious things that have happened in the past. It certainly would, especially the Roswell crash, because in the future it might very well be possible to sort of create some type of alien appearing being and then go back to 1948 and drop it in the desert there so that somebody on secret sightings or something like that can say, oh, yeah, 30 years ago I saw an alien being, when in fact nobody knows that it actually did come from a human-made laboratory somewhere in the future and was dropped back there in order to create sort of a, a beginning of the panic that might happen within the next three to five to seven That's years. That's a possibility. With time travel, it would then be feasible to re-engineer the past yeah. to create a new future. Uh, and that is mind-blowing. It is it is. Uh, it's really hard to understand. Okay, okay, now, um, first off, this is live. This is the Nerd World of Human Soviet Show here, live today, the 26th of February, 1993, and we're speaking to William Cooper. Notice this isn't a take, as one caller phoned in and asked if it was. It isn't a joke. This is, it was, what, it, this is serious. And if people are interested and want further information on William Cooper, I'd say, first off, if anybody reads Flipside Magazine, the music mag from L.A., which is really great and features articles by KRK as well, there's a big piece that William Cooper contributed to that for the past couple issues. You can check that out, or you can write to William Cooper. And Mr. Cooper, if you could explain what you have and your address and phone number and whatnot, please. Well, it's best just to call or write and ask for an information packet, and we'll send you a list of everything that we have and what we're doing. You can call uh, my representative. His name is Stan. One of these, he's really a great guy. His number is 602-567-6109. That's 602-567-6109. Six one zero nine, or you can write to Stan S T A N, Post Office Box eight eight nine, Camp Verde. That's spelled V as in Victor E R D E, Spanish for green. Eight uh, Arizona, eight six three two two. That's Stan P O Box eight eight nine, Camp Verde, Arizona, eight six three. Two, two, and just ask for a packet of information and Stan will send you one. If you want it real quick, give him a call. It will be in the mail tomorrow. Well, thank you very much for speaking with one couple. This, we're just wrapping down here, and it's, it's really interesting about all this UFO stuff. I, to tell you the truth, when I first heard about what you're doing, I thought you were saying, you know, aliens crashed, we stole their craft, and we have the technology, and people are allowed to be plucked from the earth. But as you've told me now, that's wrong, right? From what you, so you, were not, you did not mean that. Well, well, my well, everything that's going on. My paper, the initial press release that I did was called Operation Majority, and it was a list of things that I could remember seeing pertaining to UFOs in top secret documents while I was in naval intelligence. The second document that I released was called uh, The Secret Government, which if what I had seen in those documents was true, and if what I'd been able to research was true, and that others had researched and documents released under the FOIA, were true, then it was, in fact, the history as close as anybody's ever been able to write the history of extraterrestrial visitation to this earth. If not, it's what they want us to believe. And, and in the be in, at the beginning of that, I had a hypothesis statement saying that this is a hypothesis based upon this, this, and this, which has been taken off. And at the end, I had five conclusions. Number five was the fact that this could be the greatest hoax in the history of the world designed to create an alien threat that does not exist to bring about a one-world government, which has also been removed. Where can people find these UFOs in Canada? Do they just have to go out there and study or buy your video and find it? I mean, they want, if people want some proof. Where can they delve deeper besides from your stuff? Get the it's video. Into other stuff. Right after World War II, A.V. Rowe built a veritable city in northwest Canada to work on top secret aviation developments, one of which was the flying disc, which is called flying saucers or UFOs. Which city? Research AV row. Find wow. their secret test sites, and you'll be able to film these things flying in Canada just like I can film them flying here in the United States. Yeah, actually, the flying disc, isn't it in the national, isn't it in the Smithsonian or one of the old, there's actual... The, 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 I saw a documentary on it, and they said it was a failed craft. Well, I guess, according to that you, it was wasn't failed. Con, that was to convince the public that we humans don't have the technology necessary to build one of those things, which was a disinformation program called Project Snowbird. Okay, who are the bad guys? Who are the bad guys just right off the bat? The, the Masons? Well, nobody's really a bad guy. you got to understand that these guys aren't doing this because they're evil or they think that they're bad. They're doing it because they actually believe that it's the best for all humanity. But their assumption is wrong. Anything that has to be manipulated, 
Anything that has to be brought about by lies and deceit is inherently wrong in its premise to begin with. So they're fooling themselves. They believe that the rest of us are so stupid that we're just like cattle, and that's what they call us, and that they're the only ones with truly mature minds, and that they've got to bring all the rest of us under total and complete control so that they can run the world the way they want to, and they actually believe that there's going to be a utopia because of what they bring about. I saw a flow chart that you did, I'll tell you more specific, that like Barbara Walters was in on this, like who exactly is in on this? Who, who knows the secret? Not all of these people know the secret. But they're part of it. But they're part of it, yes. Yeah. Okay. So who are some of them? I just want, like, for instance, like you said, you like our single show. Our single show is probably produced by Columbia or whatever. And Columbia's, I mean, what are the actual specifics? Uh, you're, you're asking me for something that would take me a long, long time any, to tell you. Any, surprise, you don't have time. any surprising ones? It's been a fat half hour, I know. Any surprising ones, Bill, that you could throw out there just for people in Canada? Like Safeway shopping malls, Woodward's? Well, I, I don't have any idea what would surprise you, but I'll tell you this, that uh, look for for names and symbols. Uh, for instance, Mazda is the name of one of the ancient representations of the god of this, of this religion. So when you look at corporations like Honeywell and you see that they have a European division named Lucifer and things like that. I mean, you people out there cannot depend upon people like me or anyone else, and I always tell people this, that uh, you cannot ever worship a leader, you cannot believe anything that anyone says, and everybody listening right now, and everybody in this world, in fact, if we're going to maintain our freedom, and if we're going to have a good future, everybody has to learn to do on their own individual initiative what I'm well, doing. The thing is that food for thought grounds for further research. That's correct. That, that, so you're agreeing one thing that Dave Emery says the Radio America. Is that also Procter & Gamble? Because if you line up over moons and the Procter & Gamble symbol becomes 666. Is, well, that, is that part of it? Watch for symbols of the sun and the moon. Uh, Procter Gamble, the head of Procter and Gamble, was on a was on a television talk show here in the United States, and he actually admitted that he had made a pact with the devil, and that's what made him rich. <laughs> These secret societies actually worship the being called Lucifer. Okay, winding, winding up here, we have a question. Another another question for A.O. Chapman. Uh, one thing, Mr. Cooper, I just wanted to ask this before we run out of time here it was uh, with all the things that I've read uh, from your stuff. Uh, if the worst, if the most nightmare situation were to come true, uh, from all the scenarios that you offer may that may occur. Uh, what do you really advise to the average person? I mean, I recall reading the first time I ever read something of yours, which was that secret document uh, of the secret government uh, essay you wrote. Uh, I felt quite paranoid after all that. I felt quite uh, quite helpless. Uh, well, that's good. That's that's the defensive reaction. Right. And, and so, what what do you prescribe uh, as action to the person who now feel now you know realizing this or now uh, aware of it? Uh, what avenue should, should a person like me or anybody else take? Well, number one, they have to stop being deceived and learn what the truth is. Forget everything that you've ever been taught in your life, no matter who it was that taught it to you. Begin again, starting from scratch, doing real digging, real research, which is work, but it's also a lot of fun. And when you discover something that nobody else knows, it is gives you a rush better than any drug that you could ever possibly take in your life. And learn what the truth is, because until you know what the truth is, there's nothing that you can do. Oh, okay. that's, that's number one, and that's got to be done. After you know the truth, and everybody who knows the truth, get together, band into politically powerful groups, and legally take action to change the world from where it's going to a better world. Okay, um, are you taking those steps yourself right now? Or? Absolutely. I've been doing this for a long time. I run probably the largest and most effective uh, private intelligence organization in the world. Uh, I have millions of people all over the world that I've woken up and have, are doing their own research and are helping change things for the better. A caller phoned in off the air and asked if you know anything about the real alien, R-H-E-L, alien people. Yeah, I know all about them. Well, well they just wondered what, 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 he thought, what you thought of them. I think it's the biggest bunch of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. And what do they say? Because yeah. I'm not familiar with them. Very simple. They're preaching Marxism. Oh, and Marxism is One world is totalitarian socialist government. There's a vein running through every one of these people who claim that they have contact and they're getting messages from extraterrestrials, uh, including Billy Meyer, including the Rail Group, including all of these people, the channelers, everything. So you if you get at the major theme of what they're saying, it is socialism, Marxism, the elimination of private property, the... <laughs> The bringing into the world of okay, the communist okay. dream. Okay, well, um, yeah. 
Okay, that's your opinion, I guess. I'm not sure. I no, it's not CIT. opinion. It's actual fact. Okay, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's okay. Well, I guess the people at CITR, uh, other people listening, might disagree with that. But anyways, um, moving away from that. Um, well, well, wait a minute. Let's not move away from the fact. Uh, the fact that you're so eager to move away from it makes me eager to stay with it for right just on. a few more minutes. Look at the, the document known as the uh, Tenets of Communism that Marx wrote. Okay. It spells out in steps, step by step, what the doctrine of international socialism is. Okay, so how is communism... Compare those steps, what all these people are preaching, you'll find that they there is no difference whatsoever. They're exactly the same. So it's not a theory. I'm not making this okay. up. It's fact. Okay, well, what's the difference between Freemasonry or the Illuminati? And co- isn't there a big difference between Illuminati and communism? They're all the same. Communism came from the Illuminati. But one is the controller. Oh, oh, okay, so that's the communism came from the Illuminati. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Uh, Earl Chapman, we have a, uh, are you finished with your question? I'm just going to hit him with one more, one more question. Are, are all chapters of Freemasonry involved in this? It would seem that uh, to me there would be a hierarchy of, of, uh, of the Absolutely. chapters. Absolutely. That's how they control. That's how they control stupid people. Most Freemasons are very stupid, and they are the greatest uh, group of followers in the world. So my friend, yeah. so my friend's dad is a white Freemason. Uh, that's correct. Stupid, you know, white supremacist. 1996, is that correct? Well, we're going to try to do that, but I'm getting a lot of resistance from people who now say he's not only Hispanic, and he not only doesn't look too nice on TV, but he's too old. Uh, <laughs> so uh, my, my question to people is, well, if the only honest man in Congress is not worth running for president in the next election, then uh, what the hell are you people? all about. I yeah. mean, wh- why am I trying to save you when you're that when you when you're just that lost? I mean, you want to go after Ross Perot, <laughs> who's in the pocket of the Rockefellers. They made him, they created him, and all he's doing is is working for their interests. He's a billionaire. He doesn't give a damn about the guy that makes five bucks an hour. Okay. He never will. Okay. Actually, he was involved with IBM, and I I got sucked into going to. Okay, let's call for I broke my dad's we, wallet, and I've been pissed at the guy ever since. We we, we have we have one last, we had a caller calling off the air, and she asked. Um, on the back of the American dollar bill, there's a pyramid. Yes. And the pyramid, and in Latin, it's written New World Order. Does That's that have right. anything to do with it? Absolutely. The United States of America was founded by Freemasons, members of the Illuminati, for one purpose and one purpose only. It was an experiment in government to see if man could really rule himself or if he would have to be brought under control of those who can rule and in the process topple the kings and queens of Europe off their thrones. Well, the experiment was successful in that it did topple the kings and queens off their thrones, but it has not been successful because man has abdicated his responsibility to rule himself, and the New World Order is going to put him in chains again. And there any, uh, Mr. Cooper, have there any, uh, with this kind of stuff you're talking about, the kind of uh, people you're talking about, have there any been any threats on your life or even worried about your own personal security? I've been threatened, I've been attacked, uh, all kinds of things have happened to us, but that's not important to anybody out there. Anytime anyone stands up and fights for what is right, they're going to come under attack. And why would anybody care when they don't care about sending people to die in Iraq or Kuwait? I mean, nobody asked those guys that question. Okay. Here I am in my country really fighting for freedom, and, and everybody, the first thing they ask me, aren't you scared? And my question is, why don't you ask those guys that you're sending to die in the desert in the Middle East for something that has nothing to do with our freedom? Why aren't you asking them if they're scared? These private, <laughs> these private armies, though, have tried on a couple of different occasions, as mentioned in your book, that they tried to kill you on two separate occasions and came and visited you in the hospital and everything. That's correct. You were run off the road. That's correct. And one of them cost you your leg. That's correct. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for speaking to us, William Cooper. Again, if you could give your address out and phone number, just the people that are listening that are interested. Well, for first, I want, I'd like to say this. Don't be too concerned about my health or what happens to me, because I really believe in what I'm doing, number one. And number two, I believe that any man or woman on the face of this earth who does not have principles that they're ready and willing to die for at any given moment, in my estimation, are already dead or of no use or consequence to anybody. If you guys like to call Stan, call 602-567-6109. That's 602-567-6109. Or you can write to Stan and ask for a packet of information at Post Office Box 889, Camp Verde, Arizona, 86322. That's P.O. Box 889, Camp Verde, Arizona, 
866-378-86322. And I might add that you people in Canada, you've already lost your constitution, you've already lost your freedoms, you're already in the New World Order, and there's some really strange things going on up there that you better get a handle on uh, real quick. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Cooper. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And keep on walking in a free world. Thank you, and God bless you and your listeners. Okay. do 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 so that was William Cooper live on the phone, and me and Ron are paying for this, right, Ron? <laughs> yeah. So that was how long? Like, an okay. hour? Well, it's supposed to be half an hour, and we pushed that for probably almost an hour. So. And Ron, you're from the Rock and Roll Band Cats game. You were transformed. And active glance. And active glance. We played some active glance earlier on yeah. in yeah. the show here today. There's one more thing that you want to say about William Cooper. Um, I understand. I understand it a bit better. What about you, A.O.? Do you understand that? It's different from what he said the first time, wasn't uh, it? He, a slightly different impression. He was a little bit more clear. I was, I was pleased to, to hear him. Because remember the first time when we saw that, we gave right. him a document, it said like all these aliens were um, coming down and that Kennedy was killed by the driver and all this stuff. I was like, geez, he believes in aliens, but now he's saying, no, aliens don't exist. We just have a technology and it was developed by Hitler. In and it's a hoax in order to get everybody in the world scared That's because the right. Illuminati are going to take over. Did you understand that? Uh, I, I understand what he was saying. But uh, from the original uh, secret government document. But why did he put out that document? I'm wondering. I, I, I don't know. I guess he was. He, he, well, his point to me was just that he was saying, "Well, this is what I saw. It's not necessarily." Yeah, true. that's what I saw, and then followed it up. He, that, he, I don't believe him actually saying that. Uh, in the secret uh, government file. Maybe he did. It's been a while since I've read it. So I some of that communism, like, I mean, come on, Ron, you being from the punk rock act of glands who for years sung about, you know, uh, perhaps to praise some socialist values in your songs, have you become a, bo you know, I mean, are you like a born-again Christian commie, no, no, we're going to call me uh, um, anti-communist, anti-socialist now? Uh, not yet. Actually, what I've begun to do is... <laughs> well, look, listen. Since I became in, um, not involved with, I'm not an agent of William Cooper by any stretch of the imagination, I'm just really interested in what he has to say. And some of the things that I have seen on his video cassettes and what I have read in his book, which is entitled Behold a Pale Horse, and which I think any breathing, thinking human being should order this book from Stan because I don't want to have to come in here and sit here and tell you about it. I want everybody out there to read this and make up your own minds and then you won't have to listen to me and you won't have to listen to all the mindless blabber that goes on. Get the book. Get okay, the okay. videos. He's got another seven hour video cassette coming okay. up. Seven hours. I mean, this I guy is on five nights a week. He's been on for like months and months and years and years since like May 4th, 1990. He started going on the air and that's putting on three hours at least to five hours a week of information every week. And okay. I mean, how can we get okay. any information out of this guy in one I hour and have to yell at him from three different positions? Okay. It's stupid. Okay, okay, well, Ron, thanks for coming, anyways. Oh, that's okay. I need a beer. Okay, well, just a second, Ron. Just a second. So you're, so you, so have you, I, I'm saying about socialism. Has your views changed on socialism? I like my welfare check. Also, 19... No, that's good. Thank you very much, Ron. 1998. He says that's going to be the uh, date, right? Brilliant. Right? Um, 1998 has several... Okay, first of all, um, in the book Holy Blood, Holy Grail by Bajon Lee and Lincoln, there's a list of the nationaires of the pre after sun, and the nationaires are the leaders all through the ages. And there was a leader by the name of Blanche Devereux for, who ruled from 1366 until 1398. Now what a name of Yeah, coincidence. Evidently, I saw a video by, um, it was a Church of the Subgenius video, which is, you know, pretty craziness, don't do nothing, don't support your state in any way, and they said that there would be an alien return to the planet Earth on July 5th, 1998. Um, That's oh, my birthday! Yeah. That's my birthday! Well, we knew all along, Nardwar, I mean... Really? That's no joke, July 5th? We're part of the conspiracy as well, man. Uh, we, I could tell all along, personally. Right. We all knew... Okay, the 1998, and, and Cooper is basically saying, to sum up, that the aliens are going to invade in 1990, but it's not aliens, it's really the U.S. guys no, going, are, yeah! are, are in their airplanes. Not just in the U.S. guys. No, not just U.S. International. It's private no. armies funded by the worldwide Illuminati And what's this, okay, what's this Kryptonite 27 thing, the, the laptop that you were talking about? Something about how, 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 how Jupiter is going to blow up and screw us okay. all. Okay. Uh, the lowdown on that. So aside from, from the UFOs attacking, Project aside Stone. from the UFOs attacking, okay. Jupiter's going to blow up the screw us even more to scare us. So we fall for these Illuminati. I've actually attempted to back the, uh, back up his statement on that. I went to the Vancouver Planetarium. What did he say? Can I spoke. Okay, first of all, what Cooper says in his book is that. 
The project Galileo, which is a space probe that has been launched in 1989, is on its way to Jupiter, and it will orbit the planet Jupiter, and it will drop a little probe into the atmosphere of the planet Jupiter. The probe will be activated for 42 minutes, and what it will do is it will send back a continuous blur of information that will be bounced off the orbiting satellite and sent back to Earth. There has been documentation which states that aboard the orbiting spacecraft there is 49.7 pounds of plutonium which as the orbit of the satellite decays it will deliver this payload into the gravitational field of the planet Jupiter and the gravity, the gravity itself will act on the payload exactly as an implosion detonator acts on a nuclear warhead and it will ignite the planet Jupiter into a star which has already been called Lucifer. Now, get a piece of paper and write down the word Jupiter in the English language, and right underneath it, write down Lucifer, and they match up exactly. Um, however, David Dodge at the Vancouver Planetarium... Who's that again? David Dodge. Who's that name again? Mr. David Dodge. Professor David Dodge. I went there and I tried to find the three stars, the ancient Sumerian cuneiform that George Michinowski wrote about, that a star would reappear 6,000 years after a hit had disappeared in the heavens between Z Zeta Puppis, Gamma Valorum, and Lambda Valorum, we were unable to locate two of those stars, and he came to the conclusion that it's a ridiculous thing, and the fact is it won't happen because, um, at the very least, the explosion is too damn big, and it will blow itself out. However, what we have to remember is that Planet Jupiter has a gaseous makeup of hydrogen and helium, and anybody out there who's ever seen a, a film footage of the Hindenburg knows very well what can happen to helium. And you know what's really fun? You know, that's, hi that's hydrogen, I think. That's hydrogen? With hydrogen because, um, okay, you got it right, man. Well, it's one of the two. <laughs> okay, and it's really scary now, Ron. It was number one and number two on the period. After, well, after having William Cooper in here to answer all these questions for people, William Cooper's show has been jammed. People haven't been able to get the information. Yeah, yeah. Even on this show right now, the phone line is jammed. 2487-822487 is jammed. Somebody is jamming the phone right now to stop callers from coming through and asking questions. No, you, are you witnessing that? Uh, absolutely. Look at all those lights. Look, at they're getting jammed by Illuminati in this university and in this station. No, 